This painting is about a light boat. It's about a light boat called the Carpenteria. It resides at the Queensland Maritime Museum in the heart of Brisbane. It's a topic that I've really wanted to paint for a long time and finally had a chance to do it. I hope you enjoy it. Okay, this is a painting I've wanted to paint for a long time and um, I've taken the opportunity to have a crack at it in terms of the colours that I'm using and how I'm going to approach this. First of all, I'm going to spread a lot of water out on the top of this, uh, the surface of the page. So this is a full sheet of watercolour paper. It's Arsh 300 GSM rough and I've started by first of all play, uh, paint, uh, drawing out the drawing but now I'm putting out a lot of water. I'm going to approach the top half or top third of this painting first. So I really want to paint the, the background first and just to start setting uh, a, a sort of a tone of the painting to get the, the background tones correct. So I'm carefully painting around one of the canopies to the boat at the back to the maritime exhibit one of the war uh, the, the naval vessels at the back and I've just left a little piece of the canopy over the back of the deck I'm going to continue with some light blues some cerulean blue into the into the sky and because the page is very wet I'm a, a sort of allowed to liberally place some soft blue cerulean blue tones through uh, and above uh, the, uh, the 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 vessels at the back so I'm, I'm sort of gently avoiding some of the elements that I really want to leave with little pieces of white and once you've gotten rid of those pieces it's very hard to bring back it's a little bit of burnt sienna I'm just introducing as a bit of a, uh, a slight muddiness to the cerulean blue. This is really just to allow another colour to, to merge with the, the initial cerulean blue. Continuing on with the cerulean blue but also with little pieces of burnt sienna and other warm tones just to add a, a soft, broad, changeable colour across the back. Of the image. So I can afford to come down pretty much around underneath most of the pieces that I'm wanting to keep uh, and go around some of the pieces that I'm wanting to keep white but generally as you can see the whole of that back area I'm, I'm really infusing with just one one or two tones so a little bit more burnt sienna merging into the soft cerulean blue, leaving that little boat in the back right. I want to pick up a little bit of a highlight there. I'm also leaving the lantern of the foreground uh, boat of the Capricornia and just really bringing some of these light blue, cerulean blue tones mixed with a little bit of burnt cinder down through the picture, down through the painting. So you can sort of see it sort of creeping down into the bowels of the dry dock, adding a little bit of yellow ochre now. And as I'm setting up, really just setting up the base tone of the whole picture. So some of these areas are, are warmer in nature, some of them are cooler, but I'm happily merging one tone with the other. There's no real uh, need to worry about too much detail, just a general sort of tone over the, the body of the painting. Yeah, merging it up through into the blues, even if that means a little bit of a little bit of a green mix, it really doesn't matter. I'm sort of careful really to keep the main deck of the Capricornia, that's the vessel in the foreground, white. And as you can see, I'm merging the, the yellow ochre back into those blues, into the cerulean blue, merging it back up into where I painted originally with some burnt sienna mixes. Just creating a soft, soft merging of tones. Again, adding a little bit more warmth with the yellow ochre. You can see that the mix is still fairly, uh, fairly watery. Uh, now, burnt sienna. I'm dropping into the, the 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 palette a little bit of cobalt also. This is graying up uh, a fairly warm tone. So whilst I had 
yellow ochre there. I've just dropped in a little bit of the cobalt with the burnt sienna and ochre mix just to still keep it warm. But I know that the depths of the, um, uh, the dry dock are fairly dark. So rather than wasting my time with uh, a very early light wash, I can get quite dark quite quickly. And to balance up the other side, I'm introducing the same color again. Always just bringing down and mixing with the previous tones while they're still wet. Richer burnt siennas, some cobalt, mixes of yellow ochre in there. I think this could even be a little bit of my uh, transparent red oxide. Again, this is in on the shady side of the dry dock. So I'm really just sprinkling this rich, warm tone, little bits of yellow ochre, bringing that down into the into the bottom, down to the bottom of the dry dock. Quickly, just bringing through some of these colours. I can't really afford to spend too long mixing these colours because the paper is always drying. So adding a little bit of cobalt into that burnt sienna mix. There's a sort of a, a warm green, I'm trying to emphasize a little bit more of the uh, earlier browns. Now I'm sort of picking up some of the cooler cobalt blues as I race down towards the foreground. You can see that motion to try and continue sprinkling this color through. More burnt sienna, more yellow ochre. There's burnt sienna and yellow ochre being dropped in again. So I have to be careful I don't leave any edges uh, around where I, I really don't wish to have them. So I'm quickly mixing colors. More burnt sienna, more yellow ochre. As you can see, there's an abundance of burnt siennas and yellow ochres. A lot more water again to mix and have those colors merge on the page. I'm trying to prevent, as you can see, I'm trying to prevent any hard edges, so I have to quickly work my way down. In the foreground left, there are some uh, hills. Well, not so, I wouldn't say call them a hill, but the, the hard, steep edge of the dry dock wall. There's a little bit more ruggedness, a little bit more of a natural escarpment on that side. And just continuing those colors down, as you can see, I'm bringing down richer, richer, thicker tones, more burnt sienna more yellow ochre in a rich mix. Now bringing it down that right hand side. This area here is in a, a shaded. This is in a shaded area down on that right hand side. And I'm just bringing down a lot of water, softening the tone as it reaches up around to the top right, but bringing in that richer burnt sienna yellow ochre mix down through the down through to the bottom right hand of the um, picture introducing some cad red it's it really doesn't make that much difference at this stage it's a strong color but a lot of that color there that you see will be in shade so the fact that I'm playing with it outside of the uh, edges of the, the edge of the vessel and playing with it down through the bottom right hand corner there, I'll be introducing some cobalt and burnt, uh, French ultramarine. Again, this is all in shadow, so I'm really trying to richen up the shaded area, bringing that same color from the right now over to the left to balance up the tones that I have introduced on the right. Now I'm introducing them in, in pieces here on the left hand side. Again it's a continual movement to try and prevent the, uh, the page setting and then fixing a color in, in, in space so that I have hard edges. This is now introducing some of the French ultramarine with the burnt sienna and the yellow ochres. Again all of the colors that I've used already I'm now just trying to connect with the, the reds on the right and on the blue uh, uh, and on the left. So continually working those same darks up into the further reaches of the page. 
you can sort of see that there's a continuing connection of all the colors I'm, I'm really trying to make sure that i have a balance of tones from left to right so as you can see the bottom half of the page is really now starting to get quite dark and thick with color I still need some water obviously to make the the paint and the pigment move around but i'm really dropping in lots of water just to make sure that i don't have any hard frozen edges to any of the um, color that I've already put down accentuating maybe some of the the warmth directly underneath the vessel and just just merging those colors in with the last elements of that cad red and the French ultramarine and the cobalt that I've been mixing I'm mixing some more of these dark cooler hues now a little bit of alizarin a little bit of cobalt a little bit of French ultramarine again before the painting in its first wash dries I'm introducing some nice depth into the shadows so the shadow isn't going to be just black in fact there is no black there will be more mergings of three colors the alizarin crimsons the cobalts and the french ultramarines and some burnt sienna so all those three colors all those three or four colors i've already introduced again now before I wait and dry I'm introducing this cad red into the body of the vessel Capricornia in the foreground here just the first first initial washes there is a little bit of depth and articulation to the facade to the front of this vessel so it's important to just prepare the first wash of this vessel so I'm just Picking up the light transparent CAD red and working it in to the hull of the vessel, introducing some darker, thicker colours, and just playing, just playing with the richness and articulation of some of the panel work on the side of the uh, Capricornia. That's sort of what I'm picking up at the moment. The, the reason for the dark elements is because I'm actually interested in those lighter white elements or the light pink elements that are just able to be seen. They're actually going to become very important as I work my way through the painting. So whilst I put down rich red, I'm actually interested in those light red pink elements. So here we have now, as the page is still drying, I'm dropping in some of the cooler cooler greys so this grey is French ultramarine if not cobalt mixed with alizarin crimson and burnt sienna and this is dropped in here on the left hand side because this is the shadow the shadow side of the image so I'm really trying to express a bit more depth and warmth at the same time to this side this shadow side of the painting so it's a slow build up you can sort of see the purple mixes that I've got there so I'm introducing these these greys and uh, continually playing with both cobalt and French ultramarine with the alizarin crimson in these mixes richening darkening as I go the beauty of dropping these in over the top of drying colors is because they're sticky they'll the the the, uh, the the pigments themselves will freeze in space with soft edges so now we're continuing as this first layer is dry i've made a, a, a another wash now of a light gray so again it's a cerulean blue alizarin crimson with a burnt uh, burnt sienna mix so it's another gray and i'm now starting to go over again the the furthest uh, elements away from the focal point at the front and with those elements i'm just working with a pretty simple mid gray i could have picked uh, a more specific colors to accentuate maybe the maybe the, the the actual color of the vessel and some of the other elements like the bridge and other things but really i'm starting with a fairly neutral gray i'll try and paint a lot of elements with this gray I may drop in some other tones like um, ochres to slightly accentuate warmer elements in the back but I'm not going to let my eye move away 
and be attracted by any uh, um, uh, um, interesting color combinations at the back of the image. So I'm going to keep them fairly neutral. So as you can see, I'm working my way through the back elements of this image. Just again, working with some a mid gray, picking up some little highlights, leaving some little pieces of, uh, of the previous tone. So effectively, they look like little white tonal elements. Working my way around the canopy that sits on the back of the vessel, the naval vessel. That naval vessel, by the way, is called the Diamantina. It also sits the Queensland Maritime Museum dry dock. So to, together they make a, a really nice composition on, in this particular case, on a portrait style image. So here we are, we're picking up again with these mid grays, we're picking up these other elements like the bridge, linking those through to the, the, uh, the superstructure of the naval vessel at the back. As you can see, none of these colors are sort of dominated, dominating colors. They're just neutral, mid grays, just enough to suggest um, some some a, a level of detail without actually having your eye taken taken away from the focal point at the foreground. So that's one of the main things I'm working on is to just work up the depth of the image and work up some semblance of it being a real you know scene that we're looking at, but we're just playing down the detail and the tonal range of the elements at the back. So I'm picking up highlights of little shaded elements, little vertical posts, maybe some hoardings on the side of the um, um, the side of the fencing, further building up some of the, the shadows to the inside face of the actual dry dock at the back there. Working my way around again with this mid mid gray through some of the shade now underneath the extended canvas tarp wall and over the back of the Diamantina. Just playing with a little bit more depth, leaving some little light touches, little pieces of white that will just accentuate some of the details in the back of the in the back of the boat underneath that canopy obviously it's all in shade but I'll work my way through a number of layers of shade and shadow and tone in these greys so the fact that I can work through and generally paint everything in one tone in one hit back there I'll be building it up with another layer once this one dries just again to build up the depth of shadow without becoming um, too dominating as a as a series of details or as you know, I just don't want to emphasize the back of the boat too much so that's why I'm painting it in a fairly muted mid gray few little details continuing more gray Finding the shape of the back of the boat now and some of the other elements to the right hand side of the boat. Now I'm just starting to pick up the underside of the gang gangplank or entry point to the Diamantina. So below the um, bridge, the connecting bridge, I'm now starting to drop in again more grey. This grey will be a fairly dominant type of tone towards the back of the boat. And as the shadow develops down 
the sides of the um, dry dock will be bringing those shadows, the depths of those shadows to the foreground down the sides and I'll be building them up. I'm going to start developing up some of these tiers. The interesting thing is, is that I have to really figure out how to set up and work uh, a series of steps on the sides of the dry dock. They're fairly steep steps. They're not sitting steps. They are literally, uh, I suppose they're, they're working edges and working platforms, but it's, a, it's, a, it's an interesting type of detail to articulate in watercolor. So I'm sort of pondering how, how I deal with that fairly slowly. The one thing that I have to maintain in all of these um, elements, both sides of these vessels, is that everything vanishes uh, to a, a point in the distance. So I've got to be really conscious of how I develop the three-dimensionality and the reality of how a perspective with these uh, stepping walls uh, works in this space. Obviously if I paint them all over the show um, the painting will lose credibility as a three-dimensional reality because in fact you know it, we've got to be cognizant of the fact that f of the fact that we've got to try and deceive the eye into thinking that this is a reality. So being accurate with your three-dimensionality is a critical piece to any any type of painting that deals with um, constructed uh, man-made forms So I've, I've brought in the, the darker tone. Again, another mid-gray. I'm just developing these tones. I'm leaving some little highlights here and there, setting up and trying to build up the tonal range of the side walls. So I've just dropped down this first mid-gray. Mid I'm happy that I'm leaving a few little white highlights that will probably accentuate either a reflection of the sky in puddles of water or leaving just enough of the white spots to create enough uh, interest for the eye to be dragged back down into the depths of the scene. So I'm working up now a mid to dark purple. I'm wanting to bring in this mid to dark purple. It'll have burnt sienna in it and a little bit of yellow ochre as we uh, as a as a as a as a sort of a tone um, that's that's a dark tone. I've fairly quickly realised that the tones down that. In, in the interior of this uh, dry dock are fairly dark. So I think I've just thrown caution to the wind now and I've started to really work with some darker tones, knowing that even when these tones dry, when these colors dry, we're gonna be still confronted with something that will take about 50% of the darkness out of that color. So we're, we're not really painting with very dark colors. They may seem so at, at the early stages now, but they really won't be by the time they dry. So you can see that by making these tones fairly dark, I'm now starting to really pull the edges of the vessels uh, out. So these dark areas are really the depths, the depths of our dry dock. And we can afford to be a little bit bit more bold with our darker colors here. So continually working on trying to improve or at least trying to identify and show that there's some there is an angle to the side of these uh, of this dry dock space. So I'm just setting this up even if even if it's doing that in paint I'm sort of setting up the sides of these um, elements by showing an incline some first first shadows, first inclines on that on that surface. So this is still very wet paint, a lot of moisture, a lot of water coming down as I bring in this color down. Now, again, this is a second layer of a tone 
over the first one I'm bringing down. You can see I'm bringing down over that ochre burnt sienna mix. Now I'm bringing the second tone down and starting to define some edges of the vessels. Just really slowly, sort of in fairly key brush strokes, just trying to define some edges. The bottom of the keel of the boat is the darker line on that center right. And using the side of the brush to try and bring in some little little edges, little broken edges, picking up some little highlights again in the um, in the pieces of buttressing or little wedges that sit underneath the boat. It's just introducing some little white lighter highlights here. Now continuing with this dark color in the foreground. I'm building up another purple. I just really need to keep moving that tone and work it so that it works its way down to the bottom of the page, tracing through darker colors continuously. I'm pondering on some elements in the foreground because there is a transition at some stage to some lighter tones in that foreground quarter. But for this, for this, for the purposes of our exercise at the moment, still introducing some fairly rich dark colours. Um, there aren't any light colours down in these uh, lower areas. Uh, I'll be thinning the thinning the um, the tones down here in in there to allow the uh, the lighter ochre colours come through. I'm painting and developing this little reflection in a water puddle. You can see that I've used a cerulean blue that I've used at the top of the page just introducing hard broken edges to the edge of this cerulean blue that's that's effectively a reflection of a water a ponded piece of water that's reflecting up to the up to this up to the heavens up to the sky and that will be further accentuated as the painting develops later on So you can sort of see that central foreground area. There are browns, there are, there are blues, there are darks, there, is, there are tones of all sorts in that area. There's no singular color. So the importance of being able to introduce variations upon the theme with different colors is quite important. But as you can see also developing is that all of those dark tones, even the bottom left hand of the image, which is already dried, there are very similar tonal characteristics so the colors that I've been using are fairly homogenous. There isn't a, um, a, a dramatically different color, although it might be a lighter color to the left as the central area, area you'll still see that they are still very uh, similar in, in nature. Now I've introduced an, an extremely dark tone. This tone is a sticky combination of French ultramarine alizarin crimson and burnt sienna and i've decided to put that down now the red has dried of the the boat holes red has dried and it's a fairly light tone but i've also introduced it whilst the ground uh, the bottom of the dry dock is still a little bit wet it's not fully wet and the beauty of that is that as i paint the bottom of the hull down i'm introducing those dark colors into the shadow area and those two tones uh, those two main tones are, whilst wet are able to just merge softly into each other now again with these tracery lines these are the rail rail tracks that uh, are, um, sit along the bottom of the dry dock the the boats are literally rolled into place along these railway tracks and i just wanted to have a soft indication uh, of, of them existing and being underneath the vessels i didn't want to have them as hard lines so i painted them while they were still or while the previous color was still soft and dry um, wet and drying in the bottom of the picture so i'm just 
bringing these dark purples through on the left hand side as well as you can see the whole nature of this image is really dark and, and shady directly underneath these boats it's not common that I normally race straight into using my darks but in this particular case there's no reason not to uh, tackle these dark tones purely because most of the painting the bottom half of the painting is made up of a series of darks so the fact that uh, I've raced straight into those darks is not in this particular issue uh, a problem just cleaning up some spattering of other tones over the hole And then I think I'm going to just introduce a shadow line. That's the shadow line. So now you can see that the little piece of ochre tone that I've left in that bottom right hand corner is my high contrasting shadow as the sun comes bouncing off the red hull of the side of the boat. It's picking up a shadow line from the bow of the boat and trans and I've transferred that shadow line straight down onto the base of the dry dock and by painting around some of these lighter elements with these dark tones it really clearly gives uh, gives me uh, an idea of how intense how intense that shadow is or is going to be so you can see that whole right hand side of the boat is in shadow. I haven't finished with the hull of the boat. The, the very light cad red is, has been desaturated by oh, 40 or 50 percent. So it's very much a quite a dull tone. I'll be able to work over the top of that um, cad red tone in my second my second covering of that surface with another with the, with another red glaze so I think I'm just just picking up some very very dark edges now with with uh, a very sticky dark mixture of uh, French ultramarine alizarin crimson and burnt sienna and while that paint is still drying I'm again dropping in these dark tones just so that they can diffuse a little bit into the bottom of the picture into the in, in effectively into the first wash so as I introduce those extremely dark tones you can see what I originally painted is fairly dark being almost of a pinky tone pink in nature I'm able to even pick up that as a light as a, when it sits there on the in that in the shade it almost looks too light whereas before it looked very dark now up against a dark dark it's actually fairly light more shadow edges So I'm just working up and developing the edge of that shadow as the sun's coming from above and hitting the Capricornia. That curved face as a shadow line is tracing its way across the bottom of the, um, the, the dry dock. 
in parts of soft edge where it's a little where the, the ground is a little bit wetter and maybe the definition is of the shadow on the base is not so clearly defined here i'm just lifting out some tones as well so i'm working with a, a dry brush or at least i've taken the paint out of the brushes uh, that I've been using. It might be a little touch damp, so there's a little bit of moisture, but I've been able to here just pull away some tone off, off the dark paint, off the dark layer. And I'm able to just slightly articulate the different surfaces to the key, uh, to the to the bow and the keel of the boat and working my dark greys as this as these surfaces are drying I'm sort of allowed I'm, I'm able to just play with some harder edges to these shadows just to give some stronger definition Yeah, so I'm just continuing to add the depths of the shadows. The picture in this video probably doesn't illustrate the tonal range. It's quite difficult in, in any situation to see the depths of colour and the tonal changes on, on a computer screen like this or through a recording. It's not until you get the, the actual physical painting in front of you and look at the tones the subtleties of the tones that have been developed in the depths of the shadows it gives you a much better appreciation of um, uh, the level to to which you know you can take a slight alteration and change in watercolor So now with a large brush, with a large brush, medium sized brush, I'm now working on the warm side of the angled battered side of the dry dock. So I'm working with a little bit of revealing of the white tones or the earlier tones through the yellow ochre, but this is generally just a nice start with a yellow ochre tone dropping in a few little dark grays from those grays that i was using earlier underneath in the shadows of the uh, the hull of the boat the capricornia but i'm now just again as a second wash working up yellow ochre and some of these mid grays just to articulate very soft details uh, through the through the right hand incline wall There is a, a relatively dark edge that defines that right-hand side of the Capricornia. There's uh, the shadow falling from the Diamantina at the back. And that's really what I'm trying to just drop in right now is that the, this very wet, soft, soft mid-grey. So I've worked that up from a yellow ochre mix and I've just merged that in with, a, uh, with this mid-grey, keeping it fairly thin uh, just so that you can still get the warmth of the yellow ochre coming through. Connecting that with the bottom right hand corner with those dark greys there just to sort of connect the way the, the dark tones continues around the corner and works its way around through the back right hand side of this picture. So there's a connection made there. And I'll just can continue with that darker tone around the, the top right hand edge of the hull of the boat. 
So it just sort of completes the picture. It just shows you that these two vessels in a dry dock are really sitting in fairly dark, high intense shadows. It's a lot of, in really one thing that shade, uh, the shadows really um, identify is the level of direct sunlight on something. So the fact that I've gone so dark really means that there's quite a bit of light quite a bit of decent sun dropping onto the um, the top surfaces of of this uh, of these two vessels With my thin brush, I've got a thin brush. It's it's uh, not a rigger, I don't think. No, it's a, but it's a thin brush. Just working my way around the left hand side of the Capricornia. There are some elements that I that are fixed to the side of the vessel. These are like struts, struts, and below the struts are in fact also the shadow lines that are cast back along the surfaces. And these high contrast elements really start to now create a sparkle. We'll, we'll end up with a lot more detail to the vessels, but this is really one of those little details that you can paint as you get to it. Whilst at, at, at the moment the, the top of the carp, um, Carpenteria, oh sorry, the Capricornia, not the Carpenteria, the Capricornia, is left at this stage until we've developed a bit more of the other components of the painting. So I'm, I'm now introducing some of the colours that I've been painting in the foreground right, some of, some of the very dark colours, I'm now introducing those to the depths of the painting. These are colours that will, uh, whilst I, I'm not introducing any other greys, I'm still working with the same grey uh, tones, it really now starts to pull together and unite the, the other elements of the painting. So it's no longer about just the shade in the foreground right, but it's now working with that foreground right shade element, shade tone, and working it back into the remainder of the painting. And the whole base of the dry dock is then very quickly going to start having the same sort of depth of tone. It might be lighter uh, to the top of the painting and darker as we proceed to the foreground, but it's really going to be about connecting with those similar tones. So you can see me bringing down these very dark tones now down to the front of the picture and it really now starts to tie the front of the picture foreground right to the center mid of the image. So that that it's really about the shadows in this painting. It may, it, it may seem that, um, or at least we know that the focal point is the um, Capricornia in the foreground. It's really tied together by a lot of the shadows that we've painted and that we're painting at the moment. So all of those darker tones are going to be key to how this image pops at the end of the day.
and just introducing some water so that whilst I'm painting with those darker tones, those dark, dark greys, I'm just using a little bit of water to create a transparency to some of those grey tones that I've been using so that I can get a little bit of the warmth of the previous colours coming through. So just building up my tones, my mid, mid greys as I leap to the front of the picture. Yeah, so continuing with those mid greys, I'm just working my mid grey now up the um, the right hand side. It won't be as heavy as the way that I introduced the mid mid greys on the left hand side. It's a lot more light falling onto our subject on the right hand side of this painting. So I'm really just trying to develop a little bit more slowly how those darker elements work their way up the side of the inclined walls. adding now a little texture a little bit of texture to the base of the painting just tapping the side of the brush with some paint in it just to, just to generate a little bit of extra character and detail over what would otherwise be just a series of flat tones whilst merging they're still flat tones so just adding a little bit of sprinkle of interesting different scale Now here I'm introducing a bit of the, the strong cad red tone. I'll be wa wa washing down or at least merging some lighter tones over some of these areas of the, the vibrant red. A lot of this, a lot of the vibrant red is in direct sunlight, so you'll have slightly lighter reds, maybe pinks, that will accentuate some of those edges with a, a more transparent, maybe a more transparent red to accentuate the lighter elements. But then again, a lot of those surfaces will be in shade, so you'll have you'll have red, uh, cad red, together with some shaded. Uh, purple purple gray I won't do this all in one hit as I, as I really want to just pick up some of the surfaces and some of the edges harder edges of those shadows so here I'm just sort of sprinkling a little bit of 
red around some of the equipment. Not all of it's accurate, I'm just playing with general suggestions. Working my way around further forward, a little bit more articulation around some of the little highlighted chains, little chain mounts, all of the elements relating to how the anchors work through the deck, and just painting up some more little handles and some other paraphernalia on the on the deck itself. little hooks and cleats and you know some of these details I can get away with others are just purely there as a reference point no real detail but it may be better that you put something in that, that rather than nothing so these are just boxes of similar color without really too concerned about the exact nature of what they're what they're holding what they're there doing so Some of the detail work at, at the rear. I think there's an open structure on the on the vessel itself. A lot of cross bracing. And I really like the way that it sat silhouetted against the the back of the Diamantina vessel at the back. So it's these highlights of dark against light that are of real interest to me. I really enjoy painting some of these sort of high contrast areas. It's about the only place I really worry about, uh, you know, being a little bit more, I suppose, specific or pristine when it comes to uh, managing the details of what these things look like. Get that's that's the time you can sort of exploit some really nice um, key features of of the painting. So I can see now that the the scarlet red of the elements on on the deck of the Capricornia are really starting to come together. I've got enough down with the overall tone that I can start using my rigger to really have a crack at some of these uh, handrails, some of these other elements around the top surface of the um, Capricornia. You'll notice I've left the deck white. We'll still be adding other shadow tones and shade tones to that, but I'm not going to be specifically painting uh, the the top surface of this boat in any great to any great extent. There are some tonal elements that I'll play with, but there's a nice shadow down this right hand side that I'll have a crack at it uh, shortly. So I'm just working my way around the edge of the deck with a little fine red rigger just to give a little bit more clear definition to the top of the deck of the Capricornia. Now I'm going to start painting the sides. So I've started with a thinner wash of the CAD red. I've, I know I dropped in a little piece of, just a touch of the mid orange that I have, just to give a little bit of warmth to that red. 
but I'm now going to really exploit those light areas that I left from the previous first wash of the CAD Red. So I've definitely branded, divided the, the side of the boat into three bands. And I'm now going to just work my way around and identify with the depth of painting and the depth of tone that I'm using, really try to make a feature of the fact that the steel is a three banded hull to this boat. So I've got the top banding painted, continually looking at how color evolves on that one. Just accentuating that a little bit more. Now just moving my way around to complete the second band. I'll still add further pieces to it in a, in a moment. And now just looking at how I develop the, the bottom element, the bottom band. I even introduce a little bit of the gray to this next tone. So it just comes out a touch, a touch grayer, a touch more neutral. I'm very careful to make sure that, that white band is left between. It's just a very nice thin suggestion of a change in the material. It's like a lip to the to the bottom most band which just introduces a touch of sunlight. Again going over the dark greys to the shady side of the boat, overlaying that with this cad red. Unfortunately my head's in the way, apologies for that. But you can now see as I've gone over with the cad red over the dark side of the boat that sort of really allows the shade, the shady tone of the hull of the boat to be expressed. So I'm also very interested in picking up some of these bands that are like uh, just worn pieces of steel, maybe a bit of paint has come down and leaked down the side of the hull of the boat from the deck. So I've been able to express that as a little vertical line through some of the earlier tones. It only has to be very subtle, but it's there. And I just continue to work up with the richer and richer red tones. Yeah, just continue to build up the red tones of the side of the boat. Again, just working that tone through. Yeah, I can really start to see the three main bands. Now, there is a bit of merging and mixing between, but I think it's interesting enough that um, the three the three bands with their slightly differing tonal ranges, how they just sit and work nicely against the the light of the light of the day. So it's just a continual process just to build up the richness of the hull. <laughs> 